Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about subscription boxes, not just Magic the Gathering. There are many of them, and a few years ago there were much more of them. Uh, in time, they've all pretty much gone bankrupt. So a subscription box for anime, I mean, Loot Crate is the only one that I think is still doing very well in terms of numbers. The issue with a subscription box comes down to the value. Is there enough value in the box? Otherwise, why wouldn't you just go to your local game store? I think a lot of the value that is being pitched, like, oh, this playmat is $20 when you can buy it on a website for $2.99, or this pack of skeleton sleeves that no one would ever use because they are, look terrible, is $7.99 when the website, the same website, would be selling it for $0.99. Cents. Oh, and a booster pack is $4. When's the last time anyone paid $4 for a booster pack, right? I don't know, but I mean, maybe in Walmart, but that's a blister pack that's slightly different because uh, you have more, you have security code, then you have a security sticker, and then you have the blister itself, and it just looks better. And by the way, that's Walmart, the biggest company on earth, basically, the biggest retailer. The problem I see with the subscription box is the margins are very low for a good product because you're trying to give lots of value, right? The whole idea is the person is receiving more value than they could get at Walmart or their local game store. And that's just not going to fly because the point of a subscription box is to buy things cheap and sell it in quantity. So mass drop works because everyone knows what they're buying. In a subscription box, no one really knows. The whole point is it is random. So you could have a good few boxes and then the rest could be junk. And you sign up the monthly magic box. You could actually sign up for six months. The first month might be great, but the next five months you're going to pay for it. So the margins have to include shipping and that's very, very bad. Uh, shipping is quite expensive and when you're shipping them a value of $32, that's how much it costs. You can make your customers pay for shipping, but then at that point, most the majority of customers are gonna expect uh, a $40 box. They're gonna expect the $32 plus shipping because that's what the customer pays. If the customer were to take $40 to your local game store, that is the value they are trying to get. So you're dealing with a lot of casual players and these casual players might be grandmothers they you're targeting a very interesting demographic uh, you're targeting people who just don't know better either because they're newer players or it is a they're buying for a friend or a family member i i can tell you the story about the monthly magic box i was able to look into the paypal and see how you know a lot of refunds and cancellations and how they would combat that um, and I have pictures of the guy. The guy looks like a deuce bag. He looks exactly like who I would think would run the monthly magic box. He kind of looked like Wedge, actually. I confused it with Wedge for just a tiny bit. And it's fascinating. I thought it was actually Wedge. I was like, oh, so that makes sense. That's why Tolarian Community College is promoting it like wildfire. But it was not Wedge. Uh, one of the core things that I think is kind of, um, as someone who does marketing, at a very high level. I've won two Google awards for being the top content creator. So you might not know this, but on LinkedIn, I am very popular. I think I have 45,000 followers on LinkedIn. And if I work a little bit harder this year, I'll probably break 50 and I work if I, I haven't worked at all on it, but that's where my demographic is because I'm a recognized expert. I mean, when Google says you're the top, you're the top for two years in a row. I can tell you that what they're doing marketing wise and how they do their Instagram and how they promote, you know, certain like Pleasant Kenobi and then Hunter Pence, who I don't really think Hunter Pence just did a event in Houston where it was a charity event. There's no way Hunter Pence is promoting a product like this, right? Which doesn't ship. So the end conclusion of every single subscription box, especially in Magic the Gathering is going to be very simple. The value will decline and eventually no boxes will be shipped, but then they will charge you. And that's the model. 
So when you look at Amazon's model, they don't charge you until the thing is shipped with tracking. Because that's what a real business does. In this model, you pay a month or sometimes in this case two months in advance to hopefully receive a box. There's no credibility, there's no liability, and that's the same thing with Magic the Gathering in general. You can steal Magic cards all you want. You're not going to go to jail. Who's gone to jail for stealing Magic cards unless they broke into a store and that would be, you know, and they were caught on camera. That's a little different. But like if you had your friend's trade binder and you just took some cards from it, would you, they really send you to jail? No. If you cheated at a Magic tournament and you won, let's say, $100 in cash, that was the prize that everyone paid, would you go to jail? No. You wouldn't go to jail. If you were an employee of a Magic store and you gave your friends like massive discounts that you shouldn't give, would you go to jail? No. Now, imagine instead of a Magic the Gathering in all these scenarios, this was like a business that sold... Uh, stationary maybe it was a hallmark yeah hallmark would send you to jail you would go to jail people go to jail for cheating and fraud all the time in real life but apparently no one goes to jail they get a slap on the wrist and they get to come back the next week to play some more fnm uh, which gets me into like pre-release i'm gonna make a video about the most common cheats in pre-release i know it's coming i i like pre-release but i go there not expecting to win I have not won a pre-release since Oath of the Gatewatch. Yeah. Oh, I've not topped eight a pre-release since Oath of the Gatewatch. I've not won one since uh, that set. After Return to Ravnica, there was another set. Sounds like Oath of the Gatewatch. Um, Ravnica Allegiance? No, that's a new one. Too many Ravnica sets. Anyway, I have not won a pre-release in a long time because once, even if I make the top eight, I'm facing decks that are like... They're basically standard decks. They're standard light. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> you have seven on-color bombs, including a foil mythic rare. All right, foil mythic planeswalker. All right, I see where this is going. All, oh, wait, all of you have foil mythic planeswalkers? Oh, all right. I can see where this is heading. So the monthly magic, the subscription model is just not going to work no matter how much Tolarian Community College or Pleasant Kenobi or the Mana Source tells you this is a good product because they don't have an in. So Mass Drop will work because it has enough buying power and it's big enough website. This random dude in the middle of nowhere with no connections and doesn't even own a real store. How is he going to operate this business legitimately? The end result will always be he won't ship boxes. People will get upset. Even let's take let's take the best case scenario. So there was an August box. He didn't ship the August box because he was going to GP Vegas. And what other reality could you say? Hmm, I'm going to take a vacation, so I'm not going to do this. So I promised my client I would deliver their website by a certain date. But you know what? I'm now going to post on my website for my client to read and not email them that I'm on vacation. So F you client, I'm on vacation. So I'm not delivering their website. Oh, by the way, pay me next month. I'm going to charge you for next month when you want to build a second website without delivering the first website. I mean, just think about like what other scenario in real life could you just say, well, you know what? I'm not going to do it because I'm busy. I'm going on vacation to GP Vegas. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, come on. Like the dude paid you for August. Maybe before you go on vacation, you do some planning. It's a month later and no one has their August box. No one has. And they've already been charged for September. Manor Loot sent a dope care package. Uh, Cassius Marsh, who is, I believe, I subscribed yesterday for the first time. I can't wait to get mine. So excited. The joke is on you, buddy, because you subscribed to the August one. <laughs> that wasn't made. I get that you're busy and there's actually a channel in a Funko land. So I collect Funko figures. Don't kill me on that one. But uh, there's a channel called Popcorn where it flicks. And basically they did a um, something similar to this where they made a box of Funko figures and they were shipped to you. 
and it got delayed and delayed and delayed and delayed. And then eventually people got upset. And one, what, once, once the fastest growing YouTube channel for the Funko community and very respected Rob and Melissa or very respected became trash. And at least they put their, themselves out there, their real names and where they worked and their personalities. This is just a random, oh, this is Hunter Pence, right? Hunter Pence, by the way, has a awesome store in Houston. And he did a charity event for Magic, a charity Magic draft last week, I believe, or sometime in September. Look, if it, sells, if it smells like a subscription box, it is absolutely a scam. There's no doubt in my mind that this is just a money grab and they use the same tactics as Puka Trade, as the Monthly Magic. But these tactics don't change. You get a bunch of people like Cassius Mars or you pretend that you get your Hunter Pence's interested in your product. Then you get sign on Pleasant Kenobi and other YouTubers. They promote it. Uh, do they get a kickback? Do they not get a kickback? You know, Tolarian Community College has taught me that I need to, you know, catch myself on that. But I'm assuming that at the very least didn't pay their own money for their box. So all the valuable YouTubers and content creators get their box ahead of time so they can open it and you could convince you to buy that box, right? That's the whole point of having that relationship. Then the poor smucks buy the box and there's nothing there. I get it. Like, there's not even that much value. Thirty two ninety five a month. For what do you get? Free booster packs, one D twenty dice, which is just like a pre release dice, I assume. Uh, then you get more dice. Yeah, nice. One hundred count card sleeves, counters, promo cards, swag. Di di How many blanking dice and tokens do you need? And like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, <laughs> you start a dice collection exclusive artist altered cards hmm exclusive anime merch or artist merchandise all right i mean if you guys are if some of you subscribe to this box tell me what exclusive merchandise you're getting because for 32.95 i don't think anyone's getting any exclusive so this is the opposite of the amazon policy where if you don't like it you can just return it and in good faith the customer base or well, at least a large percentage of them are not going to be deuces, right? Here, we have to assume everyone's a deuce because, um, man, it's just, I don't know why people keep falling for this over and over again. It's like, hey, the guys, it just happened four years ago with the biggest YouTuber to learn community college. Now it just happened again. Hi, guys.